Friends Like You is recorded in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> oh, Dahlia, do you... Ah, uh, that's quite the fashion statement, even for the newsroom. Oh, this. Yeah, I uh, had a teensy bit of trouble changing the water bottle on the cooler, and my skirt got completely soaked. So, I improvised. <laughs> well, I'm sure MacGyver would be proud of you. <laughs> oh, Mindy, I can't tell you how much I love working here. And I'm learning so much already. Really? Yeah. Like, just this morning, I learned don't ever try to put a new water bottle on top of the cooler until the old one is completely empty. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, listen, did you get today's paper for the production meeting like I asked? Um, today's paper? That is today's paper, isn't it? I'll just go see if my skirt is dry yet. <laughs> A girl gives a whole new meaning to skirting the issues. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Mindy, I don't think Dahlia's working out. Uh, this is my script I asked her to spell check. Check. Oh, and look, she misspelled it. Okay, Frank, I'll bring it up with Sean at the meeting. Thanks. Yeah, it's past nine. Uh, what gives? I don't know, but we can't start the meeting without him. That's not like him. Sean's never late for anything. Where is he? He doesn't tell me everything you know, Donna. He doesn't? But you're the producer. You should know these things. Yeah, yeah. Donna, that doesn't... she said she doesn't know. And I, for one, think we should take her at her word. Thank you, Cameron. You're welcome. <laughs> now, just between you and me, <clears throat> where is he? I told you, I don't know. But you're the producer. You're supposed to know these things. Okay. Morning, everybody. Sorry I'm late. Hey, Sean, I have this great new idea for our newscast. Look, Cameron, I'm sure you do. We'll discuss it later at the meeting, OK? <laughs> Gee, Cameron, let me guess. Your really great idea wouldn't happen to involve more airtime for your sports segment, now would it? So, what if it does? You know, there's a lot more to a good newscast than sports. Oh, really? Like your weather segment? <laughs> what about my weather segment? Donna, you poor, simple, misguided creature. We're a college TV news station. No one who watches us cares about the weather. <laughs> sports is where it's at. <laughs> well, Cameron, I would beg to differ with you. Well, of course you would. And you'd be wrong. Just like most of your weather predictions. <laughs> oh, and this coming from the guy who predicted that dodgeball would become an Olympic event. I'll stack my record against yours any day, pal. Well, you know what? Bring it on, weather girl. <laughs> Cameron? For the last time, I am not a weather girl. I am studying to become a meteorologist. <laughs> meteorologist? Now that's rich. Well, let me see if I can put this into terms that even you can understand. Water falling from the sky? Weather. Meteors falling from the sky? <laughs> not weather. <laughs> Thank you, Cameron. Now, 
Oh, let me see if I've got this. Water falling from the sky? Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Sean, what gives? Hmm? Oh, yeah, that. Look, I'd rather not discuss it. It's embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, you're gonna find it eventually anyway. I was late this morning because I... I spent the night in jail. Jail? <laughs> you were arrested? What did you do? Nothing, it was all a big mistake. Yeah, that's what they all say, right before they throw the switch. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. So uh, how'd you bust out? They let me go. <laughs> Apparently a clerk downtown entered the wrong address, my address, on a no-knock arrest warrant for a cocaine dealer. So I mean, one minute I'm there, sitting on my couch, in my pajamas, singing along to Glee, and the next minute a battering ram is smashing through my front door and flash grenades are going off in my living room. <laughs> that must have been terrifying. Wait a minute. You were singing along to Glee? Hey, it was the Rocky Horror episode. <laughs> that is embarrassing. Not half as embarrassing as the full body cavity search they performed on your day. Ouch! That would be the word. <laughs> but hey, on the bright side, I discovered all kinds of great new places for my hide a key. <laughs> Anyway, they got it all straightened out and released me just before dawn. They even let me keep my mug shots. You know, I have to admit, you do have a nice profile. <laughs> And so, Cameron, I'm afraid I'm going to have to deny your request for a longer sports segment. Then you leave me no choice but to appeal to my legions of devoted fans. Be prepared for an onslaught of angry letters. Those will be the two written in cram. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently not everyone shares in your narrow-mindedness. It would seem that my talent has not gone unnoticed. Well, if by talent you mean breath, then yes, we've all noticed. <laughs> What are you talking about? Mr. Cameron Thomas, we at the USBS, the University Student Broadcasting Society, are pleased to inform you that you have been selected as the inaugural recipient of our very first award of excellence in the category of sports reporting. Are you serious? What can I say? When you've got it, you've got it. <laughs> and I've got it. <laughs> If we're lucky, we won't catch it. <laughs> so uh, let's see this award. This soon-to-be-coveted award was crafted by the same creative team that designed the Emmy, Grammy, and ESPY awards. Cameron Thomas, Phony Award, <laughs> Outstanding Sports Anchor. The award is, is called a phony? Oh wait, uh, I, I get it. Uh, a Grammy is in the shape of a gramophone. Your award's in the shape of a microphone. Ergo, phony. <laughs> yeah. Ergo, I, I totally get that. Oh, but wait, there's more. They're throwing in a second Snuggie absolutely free? <laughs> As a phony category winner, you are automatically in the running for our grand prize, Phony of the Year. <laughs> to be announced at our gala awards banquet at Disney World Resort in Orlando. It would seem that I have an acceptance speech to write. Just be gracious and remember there is no I in team. <laughs> no, but there is an I in winner, which is what I am. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Cameron's award, it's a phony. <laughs> Yes, we established that. <laughs> it's a rather unfortunate name for an award, but it's a fake, isn't it? <laughs> totally. Totally. Uh, I got a buddy who works at a trophy shop downtown. He made it up for me. And the University Student Broadcasting Society? The USBS? We made that up. It's an acronym. The US stands for us. And the BS stands for... Uh, I can guess. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. 
So this is just some cruel hoax that you two cooked up to humiliate Cameron and make him the laughing stock of the entire newsroom? I like it! <laughs> <laughs> okay, Frank. Lord knows that Cameron could use a healthy dose of humility, but you've had your fun, so you need to let him in on the joke before this thing gets out of hand, all right? Absolutely. When the time is right. <laughs> and when would that be? Oh, we were thinking about a week after we graduate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. If there's no further business... Actually, there is something that we wanted to talk to you. Who wants snickerdoodles? Oh. I made them especially for your meeting. You made these for us? Mm -hmm. How sweet. How very, very sweet. <laughs> I, I can honestly say... Well, I've never had a snickerdoodle that tasted quite like this. <laughs> Thanks! Daryl, this boy I've been seeing, says he thinks they're just the snickerdoodliest. Daryl must be very fond of you. <coughs> they certainly are. Chewy. <laughs> yeah, that would be the Snickers. <coughs> You make your snickerdoodles with actual Snickers bars? Hello, snickerdoodles. I could tell you what goes into the doodles, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Not really, that would be wrong. Well, I think I speak for everyone here when I say that your secret is safe with us. Okie dokie. About. You want to talk about snickerdoodles? No, Dahlia. She's just not working out. Really? But she's so sweet. Do you all feel this way? <laughs> well, I'll give the dean's office a call and see if we can have her transferred somewhere else. Okay. You know, it's too bad. She really is very sweet. I'm okay. <laughs> Accident prone, but sweet. <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, thank you for your time, Dean Clayton. You too, sir. <laughs> Bye now. So, is the dean going to reassign Dahlia to another department? No, he is not. Why not? Well, apparently Dean Clayton and Dahlia's father are old friends, and the dean believes that his friend is about to make a major endowment to the school. But? But the dean is worried that if Dahlia is unhappy here, then that would make her father unhappy, which would cause his endowment to fall through, which would make the dean unhappy. Very unhappy. Oh. Apparently Dahlia has been labeled as a screw-up in every other department on campus, so the dean took charge personally and assigned her here as a last resort. He thought she'd be a better fit with us. Because he thinks we're more supportive? No, because he thinks we're a bunch of screw-ups as well. <laughs> oh. Dahlia, could you come in here for a minute? What are you doing? I want to find out if she's happy. Snickerdoodle? <laughs> I'll save it for later. <laughs> when I'm feeling really snickerdoodly. Okie dokie. Mm. Dahlia, the reason we asked you in was because we wanted to see how you're settling into your job here. Oh, Sean, that is so sweet. <laughs> so, how are you settling in? Oh, great. But to be honest with you, I had a devil of the time trying to get the hang of your filing system. It's so confusing. Dahlia, we just organize each day's stories alphabetically by title and then put each day in chronological order. I know. Woo! Talk about your Da Vinci code. <laughs> I should probably tell you, I've had other jobs on campus, but I've never been able to keep one for this long. Dahlia, you've been here a week. I know, how great is that? <laughs> Pretty darn great. And I owe it all to you, Sean. Me? Uh-huh. You see, at those other places, the supervisors were always yelling at me for being a screw-up. But not you. You're just the nicest, sweetest boss I've ever had. I see. Well, thanks. That'll be all for now. Okie dokie. This is all your fault, you know that? My fault? How is this my fault? You're just the nicest, sweetest boss I've ever had. But maybe if you weren't so nice and sweet, 
tweet, she'd have quit days ago, before she managed to crack the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> oh, look, we can't fire her, and she's not going to quit on her own, so I suggest we make the best of it until a solution presents itself. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a graduate student council meeting. Whatever. <laughs> Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. <laughs> Just the nicest, sweetest, but... Well, what do you know? A solution may have just presented itself. <laughs> oh, and guess what else? I'm also in the running for Phony of the Year. <laughs> yeah. They're having a banquet and everything, so I was wondering if, if you might be free to, you know, uh, go with me. Can you check your schedule? Cameron's on the phone with some girl. He's asking her to go with him to the fake awards banquet. Ooh, this just keeps getting better and better. Do you think we should tell him now? Are you kidding? This is great. Let's let him dangle a little longer. Are you sure? You know what Sean said. Donna, this is Cameron we're talking about. I mean, do you remember the time he changed all the weather maps behind you while you were on the air, live? Oh, yeah. Every time I called up a map, there would be a picture of Cameron on spring break in Cancun. And do you remember the picture of himself he used for your eclipse of the moon graphic? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let him dangle a little longer. You can? Great, then it's a date. I'll call you when I finalize the details. Okay, bye. Hey, buddy. Heard you got yourself a date for the big wing ding, huh? Uh, what? Oh, yeah, I do. So who's the unlucky girl? My grandmother. <laughs> you may not believe this, but as a kid, no one in my family ever thought I would amount to very much. I believe it. <laughs> but my Mima always had faith in me. Every birthday, every Christmas, every gift occasion, she always got me the same thing. Bail money? <laughs> no, a savings bond. As a kid, I always thought these bonds were lame, but she just kept buying them up for me, saving up for a college fund. So it was a way of saying thank you for all the faith she had in me. I'm inviting her to the awards ceremony at Disney World. I've already bought the plane tickets and everything. <laughs> okay, Frank, this is getting way out of hand. We've got to tell him. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, Cameron, about the award. Uh, I... Just a sec. This part is genius, if I do say so myself. What do you think? You. Selling a pocket watch on eBay? Yeah. You see, I was trying to figure out how I would be able to pay for the trip. And then it hit me. I'll sell Papa's pocket watch. Papa's pocket watch? You see, when Papa died, Mima gave me his old watch because she knew how much it meant to me. <laughs> it doesn't work, but it is the most valuable thing he ever had. So I'm auctioning it off on eBay to be able to pay for the trip. It just feels like the right thing to do, you know? So, what'd you want to talk to me about? Uh, talk to you, uh, congratulations on the award, buddy. <laughs> well deserved. Thanks. We are so dead. So dead. <laughs> talk to you about Sean. Isn't he just the sweetest? See, that's the thing. I think you might have gotten the wrong idea about Sean. What do you mean? Well, he does have his sweet side, but he also has a dark side. A dark side? Very dark. <laughs> what would you say if I told you that Sean has a criminal record? I'd say no way. Sean has a criminal record. No way. <laughs> way. G 
she? And all this time I thought I knew him. Well, you have only been here a week. I thought he was safe, you know, like some great big puppy dog. Puppy dog? <laughs> More like mad dog. And now I find out he's not safe at all. He's dangerous. Yes, <laughs> dangerous. And totally hot. <laughs> no, not hot, dangerous. Gee, who knew? Can I borrow your phone? Um, okay. Thanks. Mine's not working. Texting in the toilet again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Daryl. You know the Sadie Hawkins Day dance? Well, I'm calling to tell you I'm not going to ask you to go with me. Why not? Because I just decided to ask someone else. That's why not. <laughs> Okie dokie. Thanks. <laughs> I just got snickerdoodled. <laughs> Sadie Hawkins Day dance, isn't she? <laughs> well, apparently Dean Clayton was right. We are a bunch of screw-ups. When she asks you, you could just politely refuse. I could, but that would make her unhappy. No, you got me into this mess, and you need to find a way to get me out of it. It's Daryl. Hello, Daryl. Dahlia's Daryl? Why is he calling you? Uh, why are you calling? He wants to know why Dahlia dumped him from a strange number. Listen, Daryl, it's kind of a complicated story. I'm not sure you'd understand. Yeah, something about texting in the toilet again. Oh, you do understand. <laughs> Say, Daryl, would you still like to go to the Sadie Hawkins dance with Dahlia if she asked you? You would? Great. Listen, can you come down to our newsroom? Yes, the other dude will be here too, but he's on your side, I promise. Okay, all right, see you then. Okay, bye. You have a plan? I have a plan, a good plan. It doesn't involve anything from the Acme Company, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you? Uh, I'm Daryl. Someone asked me to come down here. Of course you are. <laughs> I'm Mindy. I'm the one you spoke to on the phone. Yeah, come with me. Okie dokie. Daryl, what are you doing here? I'm here to, uh, to, uh, why am I here? You've come to challenge Sean to a duel. Oh, I've come. What? Trust me. <sighs> come to challenge Sean to a duel. Really? Really? Really. Really. <laughs> wow. Snickerdoodle? Gosh. <laughs> oh, there's still a snickerdoodleist. <laughs> I am on eBay. You and I are going to bid on Papa's watch. We are? Yes. Now look, Cameron's going to be humiliated enough when he finds out that his award is fake. So I figured the least we could do is be the ones to place the winning bid on the auction. That way he'll at least get to keep his Papa's watch. Right. Okay, how much is it going to cost us? For an old busted watch? How bad could it be? <laughs> All right, here we go. You've been outbid by someone with the screen name of Booyah? <laughs> are, are you kidding me? I'll up the price a bit. That should scare them off. You've been outbid by Booyah. Boy, this Booyah must really want that watch. Well, he is not going to get it. You've been outbid by Booyah. <laughs> How many days are left on this auction? Five? 
Booyah. <laughs> so now Dolly is attracted to me because she thinks I'm dangerous. <laughs> oh, dude, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Wait. You're not, are you? No, he's not. She just thinks he is. Huh. I hear you. She was all over me last month to get a tattoo. This guy we know, uh, Jake Muldoon, is a tattoo of a snake around his neck. I don't know. He sounds like kind of a dangerous guy to me. No, it wasn't even a poisonous snake. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dolly got all forked up over it. She even gave Jake a nickname. Oh, let me guess. Jake the Snake. No, Gopher. <laughs> gopher? Yeah, it was a tattoo of a gopher, gopher snake. Gopher snake. Oh, okay. <laughs> but now that you mention it, Jake the Snake does have a nice ring to it. Well, Daryl, it seems pretty obvious that we need to get you and Dahlia back together. <laughs> Sweet! Uh, how are you going to do that? We're going to arrange a little contest between you and Sean, strictly for Dahlia's benefit. Only we'll rig it to make sure that you come off appearing more dangerous than him. Which hopefully will make Dahlia realize that you two belong together. Sweet! <laughs> now, we really want to impress her with what a dangerous dude you are, so what kind of contest can we stage so that you'll win her back? <laughs> I'm pretty good at spelling. <laughs> See, I'm not really sensing the danger there. Oh, these guys I know have this contest, uh, Cherry Bomb Hot Potato. Where you do that? A cherry Bomb Hot Potato? Yeah, uh, well what you do is uh, you, you light a cherry bomb and then you toss it back and forth and uh, whoever's holding it when it goes off, well, they're the losers. <laughs> Can't argue with you there. Daryl, as the losing contestant here, I would prefer a contest that didn't involve the blowing off of body parts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, that stinks. I really wanted to take Dolly to that dance. I mean, I even put a deposit down on a rental car and everything. You have no car? No, can't afford one. <laughs> I do have a motorcycle, though. Except her parents won't let her ride on it with me because I think it's too dangerous. <laughs> Man, what are we going to do? <laughs> what we're going to do, Daryl, is we're going to have a race, a very dangerous race, between his car and your motorcycle. And if all goes as planned, the winner will take Dahlia to the dance. Sweet! Sure hope it's me. <laughs> Sean. A bit melodramatic, I admit, but I thought it added an element of danger. <laughs> so, uh, how exactly did Dead Man's Point get its name? Any teenage hot rodders crash up here in a chicken run? No. Any rejected lovers leap to their deaths? Not a one. Anybody die up here ever? Not to my knowledge, no. Then why is it called Dead Man's Point? Probably because this piece of property used to belong to the Deadman family. <laughs> Did Daryl really challenge Sean to a race? Yes, a very dangerous race. Gee, Daryl's sweet and all, but he never really struck me as the dangerous type. <laughs> well, he probably keeps that side of his personality hidden. <laughs> Very well hidden. Okay, we're all set. Do you remember the plan? Uh, yeah. We go out there, we race around that tree, um, and then we come back here, and the first one across the finish line wins. Which will be you. Oh, man, I wish. No, it will be you, because that's the plan, remember? Uh, yeah, the plan, got it. Gentlemen, start your engines. Dude, my bike won't start. Well, keep trying. <laughs> no good, dude. I'm out of gas. <laughs> You're out of gas. 
<laughs> Can I borrow your siphon hose? I don't have a siphon hose. <laughs> How do you get your gas? Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, a uh, new plan. Race on foot. On foot? Is that gonna be like, you know, dangerous enough? Sure, it's night out. We don't have flashlights and there are snakes. I, trust me, it'll be dangerous. <laughs> Remember? We're just gonna run out there a ways until we're out of sight, sit around for a while, and you're gonna come back here way ahead of me. New plan. Got it? Yeah, new plan. Got it. Let's do this. Uh, okay. Runners on your marks, get set. Oh! Uh oh! Charlie horse! <laughs> you have a Charlie horse. Unbelievable. I think it's for trying to kickstart my bike. I'm gonna have to forfeit. Dude, you win. What? Oh. No! Quick, throw me a cherry bomb and a match. In honor of your victory, I'd like to present you with this snicker. Hey, that was Sean's snickerdoodle. I don't care. I'm depressed. <laughs> you know I binge when I'm depressed. <clears throat> Daryl, are you okay? <laughs> I think he's choking! <laughs> Doodle. Don't you see? That snickerdoodle was meant for Sean. If Daryl hadn't taken it, then Sean would have choked on it. Daryl, you saved Sean's life. <laughs> but that makes no Ixne on the object lay. <laughs> Daryl, will you be my date for the Sadie Hawkins Day dance? <laughs> Once again, we've been outbid by Booyah. <laughs> Frank, there's less than a minute left on this auction. What are we gonna do? We're gonna slam in at the very last second with the bid so high that Booyah, whoever he is, won't be able to top it. Come on, do it. There's only a few seconds left. Mm, wait. Wait. <laughs> now. <sighs> Congratulations. You are a high bidder. Auction ended. Frank, we did it. Yeah. It cost a heck of a lot more than I thought it would, but... But if it means that Cameron gets to keep his papa's watch, then, then it was worth it. Hey, Frank, catch. What's this? Oh, that? That's papa's pocket watch. Papa's pocket watch? <laughs> Booyah! <laughs> you, your Booyah? Oh, yeah. And let me tell you, watching you two sweat every time I jacked up the price, more than made up for that crummy trick you played on me. How long have you known? Ever since I found this note in the box with my trophy. Frank, here's the fake award you ordered for the jerk in the newsroom. <laughs> <laughs> so your Mima's not flying down? Afraid not. If she did, her GPS ankle bracelet would just tell the sheriff's office that she violated her probation again. <laughs> and Papa's pocket watch? Oh, found it in a dumpster. Well, I hope everyone's learned a lesson from this. I warned you two that these kind of things can get out of hand. Now, do you have something to say to Cameron? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, that's okay. I will admit I was a little upset at first, but it was a pretty good joke, and the fact that you'd go to all that trouble just to humiliate me was actually kind of flattering. <laughs> Only in your world, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I have to say, <laughs> you got us good, man. Yeah, I mean, no harm, no foul, right, buddy? Yeah. So here's your watch. Keep it. 
After all, you bought it. <laughs> what? You're keeping our money? Hey, a deal's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, as much as I'd love to stay and watch you two suffer, I've got a plane to catch. But, uh, now, wait a minute, Cameron. Frank and Donna realize that they were wrong to play a trick on you, and they're sorry. Uh, we're, we're, we're sorry! sorry. <laughs> you got them back. You sold them a worthless watch for hundreds of dollars. The, uh, hundreds? <laughs> so now they've apologized for their part in all this. So what are you going to do? Hmm. I'm going to Disney World. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. And so, Cameron. <laughs> My talent has not gone unnoticed. Yep. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Way to go. Okay. My buddy who works at a trophy shop downtown, he made it up for me. And the University Student Broadcasting Society? The USBS? The US? The WE? The R? The I? The we U, are the US. Win. Stop. Do you remember the time he changed all the weather maps behind you while you were on the air, live? Oh yeah. Every time they're called up a Cameron on spring break, picture. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you wouldn't show up drunk, this wouldn't be a problem. <laughs>
Sean? A bit melodramatic, I admit, but I thought it added an element. <laughs> it's the first line, it's not that bad, guys. It's after nine, what gives? I don't know, but we can't start the meeting without him. That's not like him. Sean's never late for anything. Where is he? <laughs> it is not like him at all. 